What you have uh, said would be a, mo a more appropriate uh, response to the attacks of September the 11th. Uh, you wrote about 9-11, your book 9-11. Uh, it's called 9-11. I, I wonder what you think would have been a, the best and most appropriate response for the U.S. following those attacks then. Well, those are criminal actions, uh, serious criminal actions. And when criminal actions take place, what you do is investigate to find out uh, who is responsible. Uh, when you have good evidence as to who is responsible, you apprehend them. Uh, if it's an international matter, as this was, uh, international uh, uh, um, security forces, probably police would be best, uh, could be used to apprehend them, bring them to justice and try them. That's one aspect. Another, if you're serious about it, is to try to ask what the goal and purpose of the terror was and where it's coming from. And what you regularly discover, it's been discussed over and over again by specialists on terror, what you find is that the terrorists see themselves as a kind of a vanguard who are trying to mobilize others on the basis of real grievances. They're trying to show that the, grievance, the grievances are felt and they're real, and they want to try to get people to join their cause by uh, dramatic acts like terror. Well, if you want to stop terror, what you do is pay attention to the grievances and uh, see if they're legitimate. If they're legitimate, then deal with them. That will uh, reduce the likelihood of mobilize of uh, uh, that the terrorists can in fact mobilize uh, uh, the forces the groups that they're aiming at in the case of uh, uh, September 11th I think there's by now pretty good evidence that that could have been done right. uh, the major studies of uh, the jihadi movements like uh, Foas Girgas's excellent books uh, have shown that and others too have shown that uh, uh, the 9-11-style uh, 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 terror, al-Qaeda terror, was quite unpopular. In fact, uh, it elicited bitter critique uh, right inside the jihadi movement. Okay, that gave an opportunity uh, to use both the means of criminal investigation, yes, and apprehension, but also uh, to uh, address the grievances, exploit the differences that uh, uh, developed, and uh, separate right. the terrorist groups from their... Uh, from the reservoir of support they're hoping to mobilize. Well, Professor, one thing, you, you live in the United States, you call it your home, and yet you also call it a failed state. You believe it's a failed state, and I, I wonder why. Well, actually, that's not quite true. I said that it's beginning to take on some of the characteristics of failed states, and it is. Uh, I've gone through the reasons. I could repeat them. Uh, and uh, that's all the more reason for me to be concerned about it, the fact that I live here and that's my country, sure. You're particularly interested in the places you care about and can't care about anything more than your own country. Now, interestingly enough, in, in your recent book, uh, Perilous Power, the Middle East and U.S. Foreign Policy, which you co-authored with uh, Gilbert uh, Achkar, you both support the idea that a major deterrent to democracy, especially in a place like the Middle East, is that the United States is actually opposed to it, which sort of contradicts the, 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 the U.S. statements that come out of the government that say we are trying to promote democracy around the world. Well, first of all, you should time those statements about promoting democracy carefully. Uh, when, of course, there's always talk about promoting democracy. That's not everybody always talks about that, uh, but it's boilerplate. Didn't mean anything. Uh, when the uh, invasion of Iraq uh, was being planned and uh, uh, sort of sold to the country and to Congress, it was on the basis of what President Bush uh, repeatedly called a single question. Will Saddam Hussein uh, terminate his programs of weapons of mass de developing weapons of mass destruction? That was the question. Uh, that was the basis on which Congress approved the use of force. Uh, that was actually even the uh, official internal motivation. Uh, weapons of mass destruction, Saddam's ties to terror. Uh, well, a couple of months after the invasion, the single question was answered definitively the wrong way. Uh, we know the answer. After that, months after that, uh, the president announced what he called his freedom agenda. This is November 2003, two great fanfare. Uh, the freedom agenda is uh, the real goals were to bring democracy to Iraq, uh, to the Middle East, uh, to the world. Uh, nobody can take this seriously, of course. And interestingly, in Iraq, they didn't take it seriously. Uh, shortly after the president's uh, uh, November declarations, big headlines, a lot of excitement. Uh, Gallup poll uh, 
uh, was released that had been taken in Baghdad, 1% uh, of the population felt the United States uh, invaded to bring democracy. 5% uh, felt that the United States invaded to help Iraqis. Uh, most of the rest uh, right. concluded the obvious, Prof which we all know, but we're not allowed to say. Well, you know, Professor? Uh, furthermore, Sorry, sorry. sorry. So, yeah, so the quick the question. A quick question, sir. Based on what you just said, there, I want to get to you. It's an email that came in from uh, Mauritania. I just pick up on what you mm -hmm. were talking about there. Safia Amar uh, asks, don't, "Don't you think that the U.S. policy in Iraq and Afghanistan is only triggering more hatred in the Arab and Islamic world? And what would what would you suggest to limit those effects?" It's not just. I think it is uh, definite. Uh, steady studies are coming out. Another one just came out a few days ago from major polling institutions, which are showing exactly what the questioner points out. Yes, uh, fear and uh, hatred of the United States is growing. In fact, not just in the Islamic world, uh, even in Europe, which is the region most sympathetic to the United States. Uh, the effect of George Bush's policies, particularly the invasion of Iraq, uh, has been to uh, raise the United States to the most feared uh, country in the world. Uh, what should be done to alleviate this? Uh, to First of all, to terminate the actions that are causing it, and then to deal with the real issues. Like, uh, it would be a great thing if the United States were to support democracy, but it doesn't. And we know that. It didn't do it before 9-11, it doesn't do it now. Uh, if you want to, maybe the most dramatic example is uh, uh, Palestine. Um, there were elections in Palestine in January 2006, free elections, carefully monitored, everybody agreed they were free. Uh, the population voted the, way, the wrong way, not the way the U.S. wanted. How did the U.S. react? Right. Uh, the U.S., with Europe trailing behind, immediately moved to punish the population severely for voting the wrong way. Well, sir, uh, how can you look at that and say they're trying to promote democracy? We got a call.